Hello everyone. Welcome to the complete course on algorithms. This course is created by Stanford Crowd Course Initiative. In this video, we will cover the absolute essentials of stack. What is stack? Stack literally means a pile of objects. In computer science, stack refers to a data structure. Like all data structures, its prime purpose is to organize data. Why do we organize data? Well, we organize the data so that we can find it when we need it. Stack has a unique way of organizing data. It piles up the data items one on top of the other. This kind of arrangement is also called as a sequential organization. The data structures that you studied earlier, such as arrays or linked list, also have sequential arrangement of data items. Stack piles up the objects and allows access only to the topmost element. This open end Access is called as LIFO or last in first out principle. To understand LIFO, think of stack of chips. Imagine taking a chip from this pile. It is convenient to take the topmost chip as it is the most accessible one. This is LIFO. The last object inserted in the stack will be the first one to come out. The last chip put on the stack will be the first one to eat it. We shall see later that LIFO makes stack very useful data structures for solving problems such as parsing algebraic expressions or implementing recursions. Now let us see what operations we can perform on stack. The two basic operations are to store new data elements and to retrieve it. Storing a data item on stack is popularly called as a push operation and retrieving is called as a pop operation. One interesting fact about stack is that it allows access to its element only at one end. Whether you are storing the data or retrieving, it will happen at this open end of the stack. Here is a pseudo code for push operation. Push will take the new object as an input and inserts it at the top of the stack. Variable top is an indicator to the topmost element. After inserting a new element, the stack top will also change. Remember that we have access only to the open end of the data. Before storing, we must check if the stack has a space for new data. If the stack is already full, uh, this is an error condition and it should be handled properly in the implementation. Here is a pseudo code for pop operation. The operation pop will remove a data item from the top of the stack. The, uh, the pop operation does not take any argument and after removing the new element, the stack top also changes. Before removing the element with top, we must check if the stack has any data. If the stack is already empty, then pop will cause an error and it should be handled in the implementation. Stack has two operations for retrieving data element, pop and peak. Both operations access the data element at the top of the stack, but there is a difference. The pop operation will retrieve the data item by actually removing it from the stack. It causes the top of the stack to be modified to point to the next topmost element. On the other hand, the peak operation will only access the topmost element without actually removing it from the stack. Thus, the peak will not modify the stack or the stack top. Ever thought about what if we wish to retrieve any other element of the stack, let's say apart from the topmost element? Let's say for example, we want to remove the element A. Well, in that case, we just need to keep on popping the element till we find A in the stack and then remove it. To sum up the stack operations, we have three data handling operations, push, pop and pick. The operations is empty and is full are helpful to handle error conditions. The error conditions such as if someone tries to pop an element from an empty stack or if somebody tries to push an element to a full stack. How to handle the errors is up to the implementations. The stack implementation may choose to throw an error or may choose to change the size of the stack. Let's say for example increasing the store storage capacity. So far we have been discussing stack as a ADT or abstract data type. We can have different concrete implementations of stack. 
For example, we can use sequential data structures such as arrays or linked lists for implementation. The choice of data structure decides how the data is stored or accessed. For example, if we decide to use linked list for implementation, then we need to maintain a special pointer which will point to the topmost element. Similarly, if we decide to use arrays for implementation, then we need to maintain a special variable which will store the index to the topmost element. Remember that stack allows insertions only at one end. So in linked list implementations, the new elements are inserted at the head of the list. We, we are not allowed to insert the elements at the tail or in between the list. This is important to understand while implementing. The underlying data structures such as linked list or array may allow you to insert at both ends. But since we are implementing stack, we must restrict our insertions and deletions only at one end. To discuss the time complexity, the insert and the delete operations are constant time in stack. The access and find operations, the peak operation is also constant time. To find an element in stack is not a constant time operation. Remember stack is a sequential data structure. So the search within a stack is also linear. Hence if we wish to find a particular element in a stack, we have to go on searching sequentially from the top. In worst case, we may need to search the complete stack. If there are n elements in the stack, then the time complexity of such search would be big O of n. Now let us quickly review some of the most known applications of stack. Stack enforces LIFO and such kind of access is required especially when we wish to store values as per some precedence or history. Stacks are used in language compilers to implement the expression parsing. Stacks are also used by operating systems to organize memory and to remember the context when the methods are recursively called. Stacks are useful to hold values or variables while evaluating arithmetic expressions. Often we need to look ahead in expressions as we do not know the operators, their precedence and whether they operate on a single or more operands. All these considerations about operands and operators are important. Stack is very useful to hold operands as it allows the insertions and deletions at one end and therefore can be very handy to implement operator precedence. Note that there are three notations for representing arithmetic expressions, infix, prefix and postfix. The infix notations is used by humans as it often places the operator between the operands. However, when we wish to write an algorithm for evaluation, the postfix notation has been proven the most convenient. Postfix notation places the operator after all its operands. Postfix notation also uh, removes the need to use parentheses to ensure the operator precedence. Now let us discuss a step by step evaluation of a arithmetic expression using stack. The expression is in postfix notation. The common algorithm will scan the arithmetic expression from left to right. Whenever operands are encountered, they will be pushed on the stack. Step number 1, 2 and 3 pushes the operands on the stack. When the operator plus is encountered, it is identified as a binary operator and therefore two operands are popped from the stack in step number 4 and 5. Then the expression 4 plus 3 is evaluated and the result 7 is pushed back on the stack. The evaluation continues. The next token encountered is a multiplication operator which again is a binary operator. Therefore again two operands are popped out of the stack in step number 8 and 9. The multiplication 2 into 7 is performed and the result is pushed back onto the stack in step number 10. Now the next token 5 is read in the arithmetic expression. Since it is an operand, it is pushed on the stack. The next token is a subtraction operator. When it is encountered, two operands are popped from the stack. The arithmetic expression 14 minus 5 is evaluated and the result 9 is pushed back onto the stack. Now that we do not have any token left in the input arithmetic expression, the expression is considered as evaluated and the top of the stack is the result 
which is 9 in this example. Another use of stack is in recursion. Recursion is a programming technique. It is often used when a solution to a problem depends on the solution to a similar instance of the same problem. Programming languages support recursion by allowing a function to call itself. When any function is calling another function, the context of calling function must be stored. Typically, stack is used to store such context. When the control is returned to the calling function, the con context is pop popped back and execution continues. This type of stack is called as a call stack and it keeps track of the function calls. Let us see an example of recursion. The pseudocode for a recursive function to compute factorial is discussed here. We can implement it using recursion because even the mathematical definition of factorial is recursive. Factorial of any number n is given as a multiplication of n and factorial of n minus 1. Factorial of 0 is assumed to be 1 to avoid multiplication by 0. Let, let us visualize how the actual calling will take place if we call a factorial of 3. Since 3 is greater than 1, the if condition is satisfied and factorial of 2 will be called. Note that the execution of current function call that is factorial of 3 will be suspended and the context of it will be pushed on the stack. The function call factorial of 2 continues and it also satisfies the if condition and therefore it calls factorial of 1. Before calling the function, the execution of factorial of 2 will be suspended and its context 2 is pushed on the stack. In factorial of 1, the function function's if condition is not satisfied and the value 1 is returned. Now the context of calling function that is the function factorial of 2 will be popped out and continues the execution with a return value 2. When the control is returned to the function factorial of 3, the context of factorial of 3 is also popped out of, from the stack and the multiplication of the returned value of the function that is true with 3 takes place and finally the value 6 is returned by the calling function. Memory management is a task of allocating and using and freeing memory in computer systems. Memory available to a program is primarily of two types, fixed stack based memory and dynamic heap based memory. Stack storage is fixed which means that there, is, there can be a risk of stack overflow if too much data is pushed on the stack. We have earlier seen how operands function variables are stored on stack. The stack is used for memory allocation is called a system stack and it follows the LIFO rule. This diagram shows the division of main memory into fixed portion called a stack space and dynamic portion called as heap. The function calls and function variables are stored on stack whereas the dynamic object creation is done on heaps. With that we came to an end of the session. The key takeaways are stack is a sequential access data structure. All insertions and deletions happen at one end in stack. Stack follows the LIFO principle and we can implement stack with other data structures such as arrays and linked list. Stack has important applications in compilers and memory allocation and management. With all these absolute essentials of stack, you can definitely implement stack in a language of your choice. Thank you for watching.